Driven Wild Portugal. Paul goes on an all-action driven hunt in Southern Europe. Got the chasers, the voice, and the powerhouses in this, the two separate cabins. <laughs> Plus, we have the last of the pheasant season in the company of the Fulham Shooting Club, a group of enthusiastic shots who want the world to go shooting. I'm going a bit, and I know Piers is the same, going against the grain. I'm getting my dad into it, which seems a bit back to front for most people. Plus, a new farming Britain is out. Charlotte Ashley talks sausages. This is Joe and Ollie, and they are bought purely for sausages. Is it RIP for the small family farm? Well, that's all going. Gareth reveals the secret behind his billions. Come on, keep them coming. David has the news on the news stump, and James brings you the best YouTube hunting films in this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Open range, fence-free, wild boar shooting is not like you see in the movies, which can come as a surprise to first-timers. It's unpredictable, frustrating, challenging, and most definitely adrenaline pumping. <laughs> Frickin' Nora. Oh, man. When the opportunity arises, you need to have done everything you can to make that moment count, which is why, on this trip to Portugal with Sergio Couto, Paul is going to drop in some of his top tips to maximise your chances. Concentrate on shooting one pig. Don't care about anything else. Before we get into the hunting, we pick up a nugget of information about the packs of hunting dogs that make these events work. They're blood donors. How many hunters are here today? Uh, 55 hunters, and we are using 15 packs of dogs, which is about 400 dogs. <laughs> so it's, it, will be, it will be some quantity of bargain, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were talking yesterday about the care that these, these dogs have. I mean, they have a hard working life and they're dealing with some quite treacherous situations. Yeah, yeah. But it was astonishing what you were saying yesterday about the care that goes into these and actually how you sort of subsidize some of that care. Yeah, yeah, that was a. a actually a fantastic idea some, from some of the hunters over here. So basically what they do is some of that pack hound hunters, they align to uh, giving blood blood from the, the best dogs and that blood is sold to the blood bank for veterinary so which in, in exchange the veterinary comes over and check their dogs the vaccinations the you know do all the care in exchange for that blood which then that blood people don't realize is going to veterinary to treat their people's chihuahuas or pinchers or they don't know where that that blood coming from and they come from hunting dogs that you know they're athletes these guys are athletes this one here i know he's got 32 dogs in and uh, yeah, military spec vehicle all kitted out. Got the got the chasers, the voice, and the powerhouses in this the two separate cabins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got to be on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're. I think. Do you know what? I think. I think these guys love their pack. They love having their two big bodyguards with them. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. Big, the two heavies, you know. <laughs> Look at this lot. You know, if they could talk, hey, yeah, yeah. what stories could you get from them? Let's get started. We have three days of hunting before David heads home to prepare for the British shooting show, leaving Paul in charge of the shot cam for day four. Paul is shooting the Sacco 90 Peak in 300 Win Mag, one of the lightest hunting rifles on the market in one of the bigger calibers, with an Aimpoint Acro C2 on top. Each day will offer one or two drives and every stand is totally different. Unfortunately, on this drive, the thickness of cover means we can't get off a shot on a pig. So Paul gives us our first tip. Red dot sights. Everybody has their own preference. This is the Acro from aim point. It's really important getting the brightness of the red dot right for you. Personally, like we were in Africa, we had it really bright. Same with this bright sunny day. We could have a ball coming really close, not charging us, but very close, we could open charges. Again, you want it bright, so your eye picks up straight away. You haven't got to search for it, up, straight in, gun, bang. Rather than like trying to look for a faint, faint dot. So again, you can get on the stand, nice and illuminate, down, up, down, just the way you're comfortable. Range finder, you know your distances, and get your markers, so you've got that tree, that stone, so you know your distances, and uh, yeah, success rate will be better. 
While we didn't have a clean chance today, others have. It's a slick operation. There's an on-site vet who checks the animals and a company from Spain has hopped across the border to pick up and process the game. They don't mess about. It's teamwork, you know, these guys are doing it all the time. They obviously get to Monterey late at night and, you know, it's time's ticking. They want to get, get done, get the animals in the chiller and um, get home. So, yeah, fast, efficient, clean. And the session, obviously the, the young lady here is obviously checking the nymph nose and the glands. Um, that's her job. We've got the, the two guys over there which are doing basically brisket, H-bone, legs, relic out, head off first, job done. In Portugal there is some areas called the, the, the red zones, so TB prevention areas. So there's places that in the past had problems, so they created it as a red zone. So we have, by law, we have to have a vet on site, like we have now. Um, but there's places further south, we don't have to have a vet. Most of the times we have, but we don't have to. But in this area where we're hunting Castel Branco, we have to have a vet on site. So they have to check every single animal that is harvested, uh, and then she deems if he's fitable for the table or not. Day two and it's different terrain. We're just above a river and overlooking two valleys. We make sure our neighbour can see us as there's a good chance animals could pass between the two stands. And they do. A half chance on a boar means Paul can offer up another wild boar nugget. Not safe. Next top tip is discipline. That was an easy boar walking across the track. I'm disappointed, but it wasn't safe enough. 300 wind mag at that sort of angle, you got yourself a ricochet and a, and, a, and a whole pile of poo on your hands. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's after two hours of waiting here. So the, the ups and downs in motion. I was, well, I was hoping that he was going to go to the other end of the track lane. I could still see him going into the other side, but I knew it was too thick. So, yeah. So you let him run. Discipline. Once again, there's been plenty of shooting across the vast hunting area. However, a year's worth of rainfall falling in a couple of days has had an impact on the wildlife. Now there's food everywhere. Talking of food, we have a delicious, fresh, late lunch and the dogs get some rest. We have a big day tomorrow. Today's pest control job is a bit different. We're on a vineyard. The boar haven't been touched here for a couple of years and they need thinning out. We're told to move towards an area of scrub. We can hear the pigs inside it. Paul just has to be ready if they come our way. Paul gets off two shots, incredible considering he had a jam, more on that in a moment. He's not 100% sure if he has made contact. Absolute mayhem. Pigs go in every direction. First shot felt good on the first pig. Then had a bloody jam. I'll take that one. I'll take that one any day of the week. Oh. I absolutely was like, that is going to get it slowed. And I just did exactly the same thing, swung through it so smoothly. Ed Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Nora. Oh man. And that was awesome. A, right in the front. What a shot. 
We know there are two pigs down for sure, but there's doubt over the first two. Definite two, possibly a third. From standstill to 100 mile an hour. That's been on the A game from nothing, so yeah. <laughs> Including yourself. So yeah, it's good, really good, really, really exciting. The magnum rounds are something we've touched on with pHs in Africa, where the throw of the bolt is that little bit longer. Because there's such long bullets, you've got to make sure you pull your bolt right back and slam it forward. But in the haste and the rush and everything else, you're used to doing <laughs> a little short movement. Um, yeah, I had a jam up. Um, well, not a jam up, basically didn't pull the bolt back far enough because I was rushing, trying to get it, because there were pigs everywhere. And uh, I caught the top of the bullet instead of catching the back. So, but, but you know what? I still got a second shot off. Whack the mag back in, straight in. I shot the second, so you know. Good all, recovery. Good recovery, it wasn't all bad. Didn't empty the mag, but um, yeah, it was good. What surprises Paul about his Sacco 90 peak is the lack of recoil. Carbon stock, stainless steel barrel, fluted, semi-fluted barrel. Great for this, because it's nice and, nice and light. And um, what I do like about it, it soaks up the recoil. 300 wind mag's got, it's known to be pretty punchy. And uh, it's nice, gentle, to be fair. It's got no weight on it, got no scope, got no moderator to, to give it a bit of, a bit of weight to stop the muzzle flip, but no, it's perfect. Stack. Carry this all day in the mountains or uh, stand with it as a, as a driven all day. You don't even know you got it, so good choice. When the drive's over, we head across and there are four dead boar in front oh, of us. Beautiful textbook. Textbook. Maybe the first shot missed. Not the first shot was in the throat. So they're on the right line. This would be, or well, depending on what that one looks like, this is the first group, and yeah, smack on the heart. And then I just see another one there as well. <laughs> a little bit su surprised, because <laughs> we had a bit of problem with the, with the uh, reloading. My fault, not a rifle fault, my fault, we just didn't pull it far enough back. But we dropped the mag out, and we chambered another round pretty quick, and um, got the second shot into the second Wild boar. Oh, I can't believe it. Over there. I thought we had two, now we got three. And now we got four. four. So, yeah. Come four. Have a look. four for four. Yes. This, this, this is the one. Shot it lower. And it's going, it's, see, it's a different angle. Going back at that angle there because he's going away from me more. Yeah. Yep. Lower, see. Yep. So the left and the right, <laughs> going good at the moment. And then this one here. I can see some ears. Oh, it's bigger. This was the charger. Big, 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 big. So how far away? It's over 100, isn't it? Yeah, it's 120, so we're back to this fence post. Yeah, 120. I'm really chuffed we got four, four with five shots, I doubled up on the one, and um, it, but there was no textbook ball, it, everything was like quarter and away, the, the one at the top was a nice ball, come across beautiful, but everything else was like, you know, this one, this one stayed to the end, that come out like, on this track here, flat out, fast, fast as you could, so, yeah, nice to, see a, nice to see one roll, like that. Well, I'm not sure if I saw it roll, uh, I had a black screen at the time, fingers but I crossed. would say that, um, you know, if people say anything about this being a female, we've been told to shoot everything. This is a pest control job here, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, and hit it hard, hit it once. Yeah, do it every um, time it needs doing. You were saying you could actually feel your ears pumping, as in your uh, heart, yeah. heart was pumping. Yeah, I mean, it's like a bit like a fox drive when a fox, you know, if cock doesn't cocks up, you know you're there, you know he's there, and he, where's he going to come? Where's he? It was like that, but we knew they were in there because the brambles were absolutely erupting, the dogs were fighting and squealing, and one dog got smacked, yeah. and then, oh my God, some come out the top, a couple come out the bottom. And they were like literally just 40 yards, 30 yards from us. And then, yeah, and then the old, I thought, oh, steady on. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, which is, which, which is what it's about, you know? If you don't have the, the excitement and the, the, the excitement and the love for it, it's like, you know, it's what, what we're doing it for. So yeah, but good, good result. Four animals, five shots. And the copper done the job, which is, which is good. Good to see actually, 300 wind mag, Copper bullets, you know, everything within 80 yards of the bramble bush, and they were charged up animals coming out 100 mile an hour. So, 
pretty pleased that for copper. So yeah, all good. No wounded. On the way back to base, we spot a Kyla. It looks vaguely familiar. Checking the footage, we spot it. It was part of that original explosion. After two days of build-up, we feel we deserve our pigs, but these trips are so much more than pulling the trigger. David, this is your first driven shoot, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, yes. And yes, come on indeed. then, have you found it? Very different, extremely exciting. I've, I've not shot too much just yet. I got one hind yesterday. Uh, I'm still waiting for that magical boar moment. I know lots of the guys have had amazing experiences today, but I'm waiting for my big chance tomorrow. You know, I've already told Sergio, put me down for next year uh, straight away because it's just, it's, just a, it's just everything with it. The excitement, the, ca uh, the camaraderie with everybody. You know, the, 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 everybody's really uh, helpful. Uh, the, the food, the, the climate, everything. Together with my friend Tiago, Monterey's Contro de Song, and the, the team that he gets together, you know, we have one, we can guarantee one thing, is people gonna have a good time. We cannot guarantee you, you're gonna shoot something, but that is, is beyond us, but we can guarantee that a good time, we have control over that. The accommodation, the food, the reception, we can control that. We cannot control how good a shot you are, how many opportunities you're gonna have, but the rest, the rest we, we can do well. And best, you know, every year, we, the more we do, the better we get at it. We cannot just be too comfortable. And we cannot, we have said many times, we can never think that we made it, because the day we think that, just downhill from there, you know, <laughs> so. For more information about the Sacco 90 range, including the carbon stocked peak, go to sacco.fi. For more information about the Aimpoint Acro C2, go to aimpoint.com. And of course, if you would like to book a hunt with our good friends Sergio and Tiago, head over to circoutwildharvest.com. You'll be well looked after. Thanks, Paul and Sergio. Immaculate organisation as ever. Now, in this week's Field Sports Extra, we have a shooter in the field, a shooter in a big tin shed, and a shoot organiser who is completely in control. A bit of nothing, plenty of nothing else. <laughs> also in Field Sports Extra, we're giving away a shooting aid, £269 worth of custom VR shotgun, which goes with the set we had on our stand at the British Shooting Show, here being ably displayed by Nicole Moore. If you have a MetaQuest VR headset, you can use the weights inside this gun and its adjustable stock to match your own shotgun and get some practice in. Link to it below. Easiest way to win is to watch Field Sports Extra, which goes out the night before this show, only to Field Sports members who also get a discount on buying the Mega VR Duck Hunter gun. Easiest way to watch Field Sports Extra is to join those members of the Field Sports Nation and we'll send you a goodie box. Link below. Next up, as augmented as he is virtual, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. In this special British shooting show edition of Field Sports News, the event attracted over 15,000 visitors through the doors of the NEC. Last week's show saw exhibitors representing 2,000 brands from all over the world celebrate hunting, shooting, country sports and conservation. It also brought together some of the biggest hitters in the shooting trade, as well as governing bodies, police forces and environmental groups. And it gave us a chance to meet our members and welcome new ones. Thanks to everyone who came and said hello. At the show, Basque warned that shooting is facing a crisis, with shotgun licences and firearm certificate delays by police. The issue was one of the hottest topics discussed on the Basque stand, with fears that the backlog of grant applications and certificate renewals has forced people out of the sport. Some people legally entitled to certificates say they're waiting up to two years for applications to be processed. I describe it as an existential threat to shooting. If you don't have the new blood coming in, then how does this sport continue? And the impact, you know, you've, you've walked around the show. There are dozens of stands, there are lots of people here selling stuff. All those potential new shooters who haven't been able to come in because they haven't got a certificate are not here buying and the companies are affected badly by it. Several forces had stands at the British Shooting Show to deal with the backlog. Devon and Cornwall Constabulary says it is at last making progress clearing an 18-month backlog of grant applications. It had 39 staff dealing with firearms matters and has now increased that to 99 people, including experienced police officers handling cases. 
the Essex Force was also at the show. It said it managed to avoid the problems other forces experienced, which started because of the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020. Part of the grant process for a firearms licence involves a home visit, which was made impossible by COVID restrictions. What we have to do is obviously face up those challenges as best we can, deal with them, be as open and honest as we can, because I think that's important. We need to manage the expectations of our certificate holders, which is also important, which is part of why we're here. I think the whole, the big picture, the whole problem started with COVID. Everybody had to close down. Um, everybody had to go home. We adapted our processes so we could work from home. Basque has welcomed the news that the government is planning to remove moderators from firearm certificates. The Home Office has issued a consultation document asking whether mods should be removed. It says they should go as they pose no potential danger to public safety. You can give your views in the consultation document linked below. The Countryside Alliance is warning the Scottish National Party not to risk losing power after the next election because of the consequences of its assault on the countryside. The ruling SNP has 63 seats in Scotland's Parliament, sharing power with the Scottish Green Party, which has just seven seats. The CA says the Scottish Government has created so many different issues, it expects rural voters to turn against the coalition. The level of restrictive legislation that's coming into Scotland and has, has come into Scotland over the past few years um, is unprecedented. You know, we're, we're, we're firefighting at every angle, at, at every sector of you know, rural Scotland. Um, so certainly I think the influence that the Greens are having on the SNP and the decisions that the SNP make um, is, is quite a negative one at the minute. Ireland's wildfowlers have given a €25,000 grant to a project in Finland to protect the birds that fly to Ireland. Coordinated by Ireland's shooting body, the National Association of Regional Game Councils, the donation aims to help fund a conservation project that's rescuing 400 hectares of brood habitat in Scandinavia. The Sotka project helps maintain breeding grounds by re-wetting bogland. It's key for us as waterfowlers to improve the breeding grounds where the most of our migratory species are coming from and this is Ireland's first step. The Countryside Alliance has asked the Shadow Environment Minister, Steve Reid, to withdraw his comments about banning trail hunting. If Labour under Keir Starmer wins power at the next UK election, Mr Reid says it will enact a ban. The CA says Labour insisted on alternative hunting methods following the ban on fox hunting 20 years ago. Legal trail and drag hunts have now become a staple of country life. The CA has issued an e-lobby address to Mr Reid, demanding he withdraws the comments made in an article in The Times, saying Labour would outlaw all trail and drag hunting during its first term in power. Link below. It is utterly bizarre that the Labour Party is still making hunting its priority. And we want to send a clear message to Mr Reid and Annalise Dodds, Chairman of the Labour Party, Make, to make them understand that these plans are misguided and harmful to the countryside, where rural people are desperately concerned about affordable housing, access to services, rural crime and many other important issues. We need people to stand with us by completing our e-lobby today. It takes just a few seconds and details can be found on our website. Southern Water has issued a not guilty plea in a private criminal case brought by anglers for alleged pollution of the river test. Representatives of the water company appeared before magistrates in Southampton to face four charges. The Angling Trust's legal division, Fish Legal, accuses it of failing to prevent pollution from discharging into the river from an outfall on an industrial estate. Southern Water is expected to face trial later in 2024. And finally, Hunt Sabs have reported Jeremy Clarkson to the police after claiming they found blocked badger sets on his Oxfordshire farm. The Daily Telegraph reports that the police visited the TV personality after allegations he'd illegally filled in the sets. Clarkson responded by telling officers there were no badges left because he'd shot them all legally. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And David respectfully asks if you would like, subscribe or both of those under this film. He also recommends heading over to watch the latest Farming Britain, link below, featuring Charlotte and Gareth, with a few words from Mr Wynne Jones about his chat with Rishi. Now, a word from Pulsar.
Next, it's the end of last season and a bunch of city boys are heading for the countryside with shotguns. That's what you might think if you didn't know them. It's the Fulham Shooting Club. Land up somewhere new and you will meet new people. Every year, tens if not hundreds of thousands of young people move to London for work and find quickly that it can be a big, lonely place. That's where the Fulham Shooting Club steps in. I moved to London two years ago uh, from a rural setting. Uh, never lived in a city in my life, never, <laughs> never used public transport properly before. Um, so it was quite a, quite a shock to the system. I came down um, about October time. Uh, I've been trying to get down for a while, but London market's tough. So um, about uh, 10 months of job hunting, we got down eventually, and uh, it's been a snowball since then. I mean, getting myself introduced to everybody at the, at the Fulham Shooting Club, and it's, uh, it's been great fun. We was sort of hanging out with people at work for the first week who were very much city dwellers, New London like the back of their hand, took me to some cool spaces, but didn't, didn't feel normal. Um, scrolling through Instagram one day and uh, the Fulham Shooting Club popped up. Uh, they were doing an event the next week. So I went along to the event and walked into a pub in the middle of Fulham with about 30 people wearing shuffles and felt right at home. Uh, got to talk about shooting clays and game and deer stalking and all the conversations I thought I would never have in London. Very ironically, I'd say I probably have a bigger set of rural friends now in London than I do at home. A team of guns from the Fulham Shooting Club has come to Cornwall, where Ollie Williams is putting on a shoot day for them. Um, we've got the Fulham Shooting Club out today, um, who are a, a new, uh, new sort of shooting organisation, um, if that's the right word to use, that is set up in London and basically targets professionals uh, living and working in London and giving them the opportunity to come out in the summer, shoot clays, learn, learn the sport, but also now they've this year broken into the game, uh, just sort of started in game days as well. Um, I think... I think they've probably introduced 40 new people to shooting. There's people that have been shooting there their whole lives. Um, yeah. And also there's people who have literally their first day today. So it's a really good broad spectrum of, um, of, of, of guys. My job today is to try and get some pheasants to fly over their head. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, making sure they have a good day, making sure they're, they're safe um, and making sure that everyone walks away with a smile on their face. The club founders came up with the idea after the pandemic lockdowns. Me, Elliot and Charlie, the three of us, were sat at the pub one day and it was sort of just after the sort of COVID disruption of shooting and we sort of had quite quiet years. And we were like, you know what, it's very difficult when you're a buyer of shooting, not necessarily an invitee. And we thought, you know what, if you have three or four of you doing it, it's great fun, but it's nice when it's all of the people you know are the people you're with. So we just thought, why don't we start that, just trying to make a club or community that makes it easier for people to to access shooting um, so that's sort of the raw idea of what it was and then uh, it's just gone on from there. You don't have to be an experienced shot to join the club. Rob is on his first driven day. I've got uh, Elliot on peg with me today. So yeah. He'll show me the ropes. And um, what have you how, what have you shot before? Uh, only clays. So I've done Beasley and Holland and Holland things like that but um, Holland Shooting Club are pretty good at encouraging you so they've got me out on peg now as well. People get worried that, you know, you have to shop before, you have to have a licence, you have to have a gun and, you know, breaking down those barriers to entry is everything we're all about. So no criteria to entry, a 21 plus is actually the only one. Um, but yeah, no criteria, no experience required. We, we sort of got events for different levels of experience. We do beginner days where first people who've never held the gun before get into it. We've got days for more experienced people right the way through. So yeah, no criteria at all. So this is my first one, but uh, really enjoying it. So hopefully this is the start of a few more to come. It's an Ollie Williams day. The birds are flying well, the guns are connecting, and there are moments such as the peg by the shoot lodge, where the gun who draws it gets his 11s is early. So has this ever happened to you before? Never, never in my chuff. <laughs> Cheers. Not everyone shooting today has parents who shoot. Can't speak for everyone, but there's definitely four who don't. Uh, a couple with very new parents who sort of start at the same time as them. I'm going a bit, and I know Piers is the same, going against the grain. I'm getting my dad into it, which seems a bit back to front for most people. Uh, I've got my granddad into it, so it skipped two generations. Then I started shooting, and now we're going back up the family tree, and hopefully we'll get a family Boxing Day shoot before long. Um, but 
yeah, it's, it's interesting to see so many people who haven't had a family upbringing in it. And I think the social media side of things got everyone into it. Social media certainly helped find members of the club. We've sort of got a group of well over 100 people now that we're, you know, not... Just a good shot. Um, yeah, we've got a group of well over 100 people now that are all fantastic people. Um, there's sort of a, a huge variety of backgrounds, um, upbringings, work roles, uh, places in London, in and out of London, and everyone seems to get on very well. So, The thing I preach about London most is that it's just the opportunity to go do stuff. You know, you meet people from like every every walk of life. So there's no, you you are unique, but you're not unique because you know, throw a stone far enough and you'll you'll find people like yourself. How did the day go? It's at the end of it that Ollie admits he started it more nervous than he looked. A much better day than expected. Um, we only to see a clear up day. Um, we're quite light on the ground for a number of reasons. But yeah, it's been brilliant. The pheasants are flown really well. But no, everyone's really happy. Gone, gone away with a smile on their face. And so my job is done and go have a beer at the pub now. Dick Whittington is not alone. Big cities can be daunting. Groups such as the Fulham Shooting Club are a social lifeline. Link to it below. And to book shooting with Ollie, visit cornishsportingagency.com. Thanks all who took part in that. Now, from Cornish pheasants to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martinson, it's Hunting YouTube. Here's my pick of the best hunting and shooting videos I've found on YouTube this week. First up, with memories still fresh from the British shooting show at the weekend, here's Johnny Carter and his TGS mates going around the hall tracking down a host of new guns for 2024. Next, over to the States, where Ted Grant and Jake from the hunting public take a converted camper van to Wyoming for a memorable turkey hunting trip. Meanwhile in Australia, Jack and Danny from Jack Out the Back are dealing with huge numbers of camels, which have become a serious pest in the area, smashing up the farm equipment. Over to Sweden and another type of pest control. They're shooting cormorants from a hide over an elaborate pattern of very realistic looking decoys. Owen Beardsmore from Service UK returns to Spain for a traditional Monterea, held on one day a year to control the numbers of red deer and wild boar. Back to the UK and the Jack Pike Channel spends an afternoon in the hide with Andy Crow for a busy few hours shooting pigeons, crows and even a parakeet that are feeding on an adjacent bean field. Next, Dave Sharp and friends are out after hares with golden eagles and after a lot of preparation, Kyle's eagle, Stan, finally takes his first game. Finally this week, here's something a bit different. Watch dealer Paul Thorpe is a bit of a gun and knife enthusiast and in this video he runs through his collection of PCP air guns, shotguns and an interesting selection of folding and fixed blade knives. Well, that's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link jamesm at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about the show. Field Sports Britain, it's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And goodbye.